The dreams are in tatters. We were hoping we start 2020 off with a bang, where we start off with a freaking whimper. And um, Arsenal have just beaten Manchester United 2-0 at the Emirates. What can I say? A truly terrible performance by United out there. Arsenal, the Gooners, who've had a bottle job of the season themselves. This is literally the North London bottling company we're coming up against today. And we've out-bottled them by a country mile. We've bottled it ten times the amount that they can. Do you know what I mean? We're going to put them out of production soon if we're not careful. Defensively, I want to talk about our defence tonight. The area of the team that we spent £130 million on in the summer transfer window. You wouldn't know it, though, because it looked like about 130 pennies worth of talent out there. OK, Aaron Wambasaka was Aaron Wambasaka, but Harry Maguire, you slap-headed twat. You cost 80 million quid, son. Where are we going to see the return on our investment? We're still waiting. We're all waiting for you to cough come up with that tombstone noggin and knock one in or do something good or defend a set piece but you can't you've got the positioning of a lemming son it's lucky there's no cliffs it's lucky we don't play at the cliff anymore you freaking jump off it you twat but man city they've got de bruyne they've got rodri they've got bernardo silver in their midfield we've got freaking sitting jesse shingard man jesse lingard starting the game Oli gunner solskjaer mate I don't get it. I'm sorry, Oli Gunnar. You know, I want him to, to be a successor United. Well, who the fuck chooses that guy in their right mind? I'd ra rather have a, you know, a fresh amputee on the pitch playing than freaking Jesse Lingard today. There's no excuses. We've got some other lads on there we could have played. Matters on the bench. Matic was on the bench. You know, Martial's on the bench. We could have done something different. You don't have to play your absolute favourite lover boy, Jesse Lingard, Oli Gunnar. So I just don't get where he's coming from at all by doing that. I will never understand Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's fascination with Jesse Lingard. Paint me like one of your French girls. Oh, my days. What an absolute useless shower of bastards, though, eh? Burnley versus United game. We should just finish. 2-0 to shithouse Burnley in the Premier League at Old Trafford. What the fuck has happened to this once great football club? We are a joke, man. An absolute joke of a club here. We've just gone down 2-0 to Burnley at home at Old Trafford here. Off on the back of a 2-0 defeat to Liverpool. A game we must win against inferior opposition. Phil Jones starting the game. That says everything about the quality of United squad right now. Phil Jones is starting the game out there. Come on. When Phil Jones starts the game... Guess what? you got a shit team. Um, basically, we've just signed Bruno Fernandes about an hour ago. I fell asleep, had a little nap. Terrible time to have a nap. But we finally got our man. We finally got Bruno Fernandes signed, done, delivered at Old Trafford to play for Manchester United for the next five and a half years. Come on, my son, get in there. Just call my name. Just call my name. Fernandez, just call my name, just call my name, Bruno Fernandez. How's it going, everybody, then? Come on, get in there. It feels like this has been dragging on for years, mainly because it has done. Um, in all honesty, it's been the most ridiculous transfer saga I can pretty much remember since slabhead Harry Maguire. Um, but either way, he is now officially a Manchester United player. Get in there. Absolutely buzzed about this one because we needed this guy. You know, it doesn't change that much in terms of the squad depth or the fact that the Glazers are running this club into the shitter or Ed Woodward being a complete incompetent potato. But what it does change is hopefully adding that creative spark to United midfield right now. Something that we've been seriously lacking all season long. Been playing mugs like freaking Jesse Lingard and, and Andreas Pereira and shite like that. So finally now we've got a real quality midfielder, 25 years of age. Obviously a Portuguese international coming from sport in Lisbon. We know what happened the last time we got a, we got a little lad from there. Turned out to be the best player in the world. So hopefully Bruno Fernandes can go on and have a fantastic career for Manchester United and be the catalyst for exactly what United need right now. <laughs> Wambasaka gets on gets onto the ball. Fred drives forward and plays a lovely little pass back into Aaron Wambasaka. Little cheeky Ronaldo chop and another one from Wambasaka. He sprints out. Oh, get in there, my 
Tyson, come on, what a finish! Anthony Marcio with the goal and Aaron Wambasaka, the creator, what an absolutely fantastic assist that was from Aaron Wambasaka as well. Was it Cristiano Ronaldo with the Ronaldo style chops? He did once, he did it twice, he got the perfect cross in, and oh my days, Anthony Marcio's waiting for it there, like Thierry, and he sticks it away to the far side of the corner of the goal there. Willy Caballero, his tiny Willy shriveling up in between the sticks, cannot get any Anywhere near it. Bruno Fernandes then with the corner. 65 minutes gone. The set piece master that we have signed for 60 million whips one in there. Bruno Fernandes. Oh, get in there by San Jose Maguire from a corner set piece header. Bruno Fernandes with the corner assist and Harry Maguire. Easter Island head lives up to his name. He sticks it up on that massive slab and he gets it into the back of Chelsea's goal. Oh, yes. Oh, mangasm situation. <laughs> who's, who's, who's digging that over? It's so quick. Marcio makes the movement. Bruno Fernandes with the cheeky little dinked pass. This lad is creatively a genius. Look at him. Look at him. The perfect weighted pass over the top. Anthony Martial first time volley. <laughs> Edison, you've had a mare, son. Never mind David De Gea. <laughs> no offense to any baldies out there. I'm just saying he is, in fact, the bald twat. Mike Dean giving them every chance in the world now. Yes, United down the left. Fred, keep hold of it, Fred. Great pass by Fred. Edison sweeps it up at the back there, but that's it. We're a minute over stoppage time. Blow the whistle, you twat. Oh, my days! Scott McTominay! Oh, my days! Scotty McTominay at the end here! <laughs> We've done it. Look at that. 2-0. Scott McTominay, what a goal! What a goal! Edison crumbling at the back like one of Thomas Edison's shitty light bulbs that didn't work. He's bottled it. He's given the clearance away to Scott McTominay at first time. He's just pressed circle like he's playing on the PS4. He's got no right to curl that in. He's got no right to curl that in from that distance. Look at this bit of play. Hang on, I've just absolutely had a bloody mangasm. Ooh. JP says, is this a sneak pee preview to what Nicola wakes up to? Cherish this moment, everyone. Ah, oh, what do I look like? Wait a sec. Oh my god, I look like a freaking state. What state do I look like? I reckon I look like Idaho right now. If you're going to rotate things a little bit, get dumped out the cup. You might as well get dumped out the cup in a little bit of freaking style, lads and lasses. In a little bit of style. Rather than doing what we did, which is just rolling over and having our pants pulled down. And saying, yeah, that's right, we've brought the lube freaking out of us. Like, how the hell can he go from being such a top quality goalkeeper to going to being Mr. Flubberhand? It makes no bloody sense on us. What's he, what's he been getting goalkeeping coaches from bloody David James or something? Yeah. I think you're right, Eric. I think Solskjaer has a slightly different style of management, but it seems to be working okay. I mean, how do you, how do you think he's done in his first full season in charge as manager uh, of United? I, I think he's done really, really well. And, and I think um, uh, he should get a lot of respect for that because he, he came into to a club that there was a lot of problems. We have to be honest, and and I, obviously I just watch this from 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 far and and through the media and everything. But uh, as as a United fan, it, it it wasn't fun to watch the games anymore, if you know what I mean. It was uh, it was boring. It was always things happening around outside the pitch, uh, and and uh, he has. Um, he has kind of changed that. It, it, it's fun to watch United again. There is exciting players. He's bringing through the youth. He is uh, getting the star players to perform. He's giving them the respect they they want uh, or deserve, maybe. Uh, and uh, so, so I think he's he's done he's done a good job, and he's uh, he's had to make a few tough decisions, and he's made them. Uh, and uh, I think. As a United fan now, I'm excited again. I'm I'm excited to watch the games. I'm excited about the players that are there. Yeah, obviously it's a, a hugely something I've got huge pride in. Obviously signing for the the biggest club in the world. I actually signed for Man United when I was 14 as a schoolboy, and I used to travel up on the weekend. And then when I left school, I think in 1997 was when I moved up to Manchester full time to live in Digs and be a a YTS player. And then I think it was a 99 when I, when I signed my first professional contract. Then I went out on loan to 
to Antwerp. And then when I come back from Antwerp is the, the season that I was in and around the first team, which is obviously incredible, really, to be around the players, the standard of player and the characters that I was day in, day out is something I'll certainly never forget for the rest of my life. And some a good thing to tell me grandkids when I have any. Fuck's sake, lads and lasses. What a useless bunch of bollockless meltbags, mate. Seriously, I don't know if we've got United players anymore. Just a, a complete set of pubeless minge bags. Because that was the most immature performance I've ever seen from a Manchester United side, I think. Maybe. We just look like a bunch of bloody clueless meltbags out there, guys. We all know that we should still be dispatching off Crystal Palace. So how have we not done that then? Why have we not done that? Why the hell are we selecting players like Fosu Mensa over wan -Bissaka. The spider, what, has he had one of his eight legs taken off and removed or something? I don't get it. Unless he's only operating on four legs, I'd still rather have the spider Aaron wan -Bissaka on the pitch. Thank you very much, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Also, Daniel James over that complete unadulterated melt bag. Uh, Greenwood, what the hell's that all about? I mean, he's the, I mean, I mean, James is the unadulterated melt bag. Why the hell is Greenwood not starting in this game? He's seen the error of his ways at half time. He's like, yeah, you know what? Daniel James is actually shit. There's no possible reason we should have Daniel James on the pitch right now. He's got to get off the pitch, so he ripped him off at half time. Fair play to Solskjaer for doing that, for actually having the bottle to do that, because every other time I've seen him make the wrong selection and just watch somebody melt on the pitch, he's just let them melt in the second half too. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer cannot account for Harry Maguire being a complete, unintelligent melter of a defender. He can't account for him doing what he does and just shitting all over the place, making errors. He can't account for that. And then Eric Bailly getting on in the action too. Absolutely bottle jobbing it for Spurs a second, my friends. We did the hard part. We scored the goal early on. Bruno Penandes getting the goal, of course, from the penalty spot and then immediately crumbled after that thanks to that absolute 80 million pound slab of muck. Harry Maguire. Well done. Gives it gives it to Rashi. Rashi. Oh, what a goal! What a goal by Marcus Redford! It's unbelievable, my son! It's fucking unbelievable, my son! Paul Pogba tees him up. Rashford does the defender. Gets the half a yard and lashes it into the bottom left-hand corner of the net, my son. It's an absolute beauty. It's an absolute beauty from Marcus Rashford. Pogba finds him. Rashford, he does the defender and he just lashes it into that bottom left-hand corner. It's beautiful by Marcus. It's an absolute poetic goal from United at the end of this game here. And just as I was saying, Marcus Rashford, you you cannot rule him out creating a moment of magic even in a performance that's not very good. But me personally, from a United point of view, he actually gets a plus point for slapping up that Crystal Palace fan. The ball's come in then from a corner here. Shot on goal from Bruno Fernandes! Oh! What a goal! What a goal from Bruno Fernandes! He's absolutely lashed one with his right boot into the top right hand corner from outside the edge of the area. He was lurking there like a bloody zombie but he's got his head up and woken up and brought himself to life with one swift action of that right leg. Look at that strike! It's into the top right hand corner, it's from the corner, it's fallen to Bruno edge of the area. He's got one thing on his mind. Bang! And the dirt is gone. And he's just absolutely slashed it into the top right-hand corner. Oh my goodness me! Bruno Fernandes, what a fucking hit, son! How is Big Adama Traore glistening already? He's absolutely glistening out there. I think he's uh, vaseline himself up, to be fair, to make him more slippery. We've seen him doing that recently. I think he's glistening. His arms are absolutely glistening. You know? It looks like he's been sprayed down to enter a bodybuilding contest. I don't get it. There's five minutes of out of time, luckily, guys. We've got three more minutes. Fucking come on, United. Where's the old United of old then? They never say die. Get the job done. Find a way mentality. Where are you? I did say that at the start, and I, you have to stick by it. I think most people would have agreed. Oh, hang on a sec. Rashford's in behind him. Wait a second, ah. Oh. Rashford. Rashford, go on, son. Moment of magic. Shot by Rashford. Oh! Fucking get in there, my son! Rashford steals it and he breaks Wolverhampton Hearts in the dying embers of the game. He's just poured cold water all over Wolverhampton Wanderers' efforts tonight with an absolutely blistering finish! Look at that ball over the top.
top. Rashford. He holds it up the right hand side. He's looking for a pass. Looking for a moment. He decides he's going to get a half yard and have a shot. It's taking a deflection and it's found its way into the net past Rui Patricio. Come on, my son. Get in there, guys. What a way to take the three points. There's one minute left of stoppage time. It's in Fergie time. While Alex Ferguson watches on. Oh, my goodness me, guys. This is absolutely mangasmic 